It's uh, Jim Fetzer with James Fetzer News with my special guest, David W. Mantic, MD, PhD, the leading uh, expert on the medical evidence in the world today. We're discussing his recent presentation of his research on the JFK skull x rays, which can be found at assassinationscience.com. David, it's a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Jim. Let's uh, begin with an overview of your research findings, which I take it begins with slide number two. Yes, the JFK skull x-rays contain three quite powerful pieces of evidence that indicate forgery. And I should emphasize that this is intrinsic evidence, that is, x-rays on the x uh, evidence on the x-rays themselves. Slide two lists these one, two, three. Number one is a white patch, which is visible on the lateral x-ray. We'll see that in a minute. Number two, there's a 6.5 millimeter object that looks like a cross-section of a bullet that's very obvious on the anterior x-ray, and we'll see that. Number three is a T-shaped inscription on a lateral x-ray, and we'll show you that. It may be worth I emphasizing that according to the National archives, these x-rays are all authentic, original JFK autopsy x-rays. Yes, I have confirmed that uh, in writing, and they do insist that these are all authentic and there's no forgery. Let's begin with slide four. This is the anterior po posterior taken from front to rear x-ray, David, please. Right, so this is a view from the front. This is an x-ray of JFK taken at the official autopsy. The most important uh, finding on here is the 6.5 millimeter mystery, as I have labeled it, that lies within the right orbit. It's identified clearly on this slide. It's um, 6.5 millimeters in diameter. It's nearly circular, except for a small section that's been taken out uh, near the uh, inferior um, uh, lateral uh, border. Uh, it's on the right side as you view it, but it's actually yeah, it's actually on JFK's left side, near the medial, near the nose. <clears throat> or as, now, the, as I tend to put it, you, this 6.5 millimeter metallic slice has a little bite out of it at about 5 o'clock. That's correct. Now, the important thing about this is that no one saw this on November 22nd, 1963, the day of the autopsy. And the re whole reason for taking x-ray is to, was to locate... Um, bullet fragments of bullets <clears throat> that could be used in a trial. That is, they were looking for forensic evidence. And this is the most obvious uh, fragment on the anterior posterior x-ray. And yet nobody saw it. Nobody discussed it. It was not removed. So if nobody saw it at the time it was taken, it would appear to have been added to the x-ray after the originals had been removed from the morgue. Yes, that's the bottom line. It was added in the darkroom shortly afterwards. <clears throat> and in this uh, sequence of slides in the lecture here, I demonstrate how that could be done. And, and, it, and I demonstrated it myself. And fairly obviously, it was evidently added to implicate a 6.5 millimeter uh, obscure World War II weapon that would be uh, alleged to have been used by Lee Oswald, where, however, the conspirators committed a blunder because while JFK was purportedly killed by the impact of high-velocity weapons, this 6.5 millimeter weapon is not high-velocity and could not have fired them. Yes, by placing this where they did, they meant to imply that the bullet fragment was on the back of a skull, and of course the Manica Carcano that was attributed to Oswald is exactly 6.5 millimeters. David, on, on number five, this is perhaps your most celebrated research result. Would you please discuss it? Here we see the white patch outlined uh, and labeled. It lies uh, on the uh, back of the, of the head. Of course, you can't tell from which side it's uh, on here because this is an x-ray. Um, this is extremely white. When I first saw these images uh, as published in books, I was very impressed with them with this because it seemed far too white uh, to be uh, part of an ordinary skull. And in fact, uh, we, we can compare this lateral to a similar lateral taken of JFK while he was still living, and there is no white patch there. Uh, the white patch is also not found on uh, any of the patients that I've examined, and I've looked at lots of them. And uh, Doug DeSalles collected 19 similar x-rays uh, from an autopsy collection, 
and we, he and I examined these, and we never saw anything like this. Uh, with the optical densitometer, I was able to measure just how dense the bone was in this area, and it was almost as dense as the petrous bone, which is also identified in this slide. And that implies that that portion of the skull is almost completely bone from left to right. So one could even conclude that JFK was a bonehead at this site. Yes, and what appears to have happened is that in order to conceal the massive blowout to the back of the head reported by more than 40 different witnesses, including the, a, a massive experienced physicians at Parkland Hospital, uh, some, some kind of patch was imposed that you were able to discover using a technique from physics. David, is it, uh, you know, it's, it's both remarkable that you had your background in physics, but also that John Ebersol uh, in charge of uh, radiation that night, and you have the same type of background in radiation oncology. John Ebersol was the only radiologist at the autopsy. And yes, he practiced as a radiation oncologist uh, after that. So that if we were to surmise as to who might have been in a position to uh, effectuate this, this obfuscation of the defect and thereby conceal the true causes of uh, death of JFK, John Ebersol would be the prime candidate, would he not? Yes, he would. <clears throat> and there's more evidence for that than we've discussed so far. I interviewed him uh, twice on the telephone. One time he actually returned my call and we talked for some time. I asked him about that 6.5 millimeter object, which apparently uh, lay on the back of the skull. And as soon as I asked him about that, he forever stopped talking about the autopsy. Not another word to me, not a, another word to anyone else. That was the end of the discussion. And it's, uh, it's so likely then that he was the one who actually did this work in the dark room. David, in addition to the x-rays taken from the, the right and the left side of the x-ray and the anterior posterior, we have yet another uh, on slide number seven, an, an, an x-ray of special interest. This is not from JFK's autopsy. This is a left lateral skull x-ray from a patient which is intended to simulate JFK's X-ray. The reason we cannot show JFK's is that it has not been released into the public record. I have seen this at the National Archives, and I know that there's a T-shaped inscription that lies approximately at the location shown in the slide and in, in approximately that orientation. Now, the inscription by itself is not significant. What is significant are its characteristics on the film. Uh, it, it, certainly, when w one looks at this, one's first impression is that somebody has maybe used his fingernail to scrape the emulsion off the film at that point to produce this result. Now, why this was done, we don't know and probably will never know, uh, but it is there. So when one sees this, um, one expects to see missing emulsion on the film. So um, I examined the film very closely using light, glancing at it, from uh, all sorts of angles, on, and of course on both sides as well. Uh, I actually asked that the x-ray be taken out of its protective sleeve, uh, transparent sleeve, <coughs> which, uh, which we did. Uh, that was quite unusual, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. And the conclusion is simple. There is no missing emulsion where there should be missing emulsion. So what does that mean? There's only one possible interpretation. This is a copy of the original x-ray. It is not the original x-ray. A copy of the original x-ray would reflect the actual T-shaped image, but it would not have missing emulsion because that was removed on the original, but not on the copy. David, David, in, in, in general, as we sum up your research, you have established that all of the x-rays the National Archives maintains are original JFK x-ray x-rays are fabrications, alterations, not originals. Well, just the skull x-rays. There are three skull x-rays, and there's very powerful evidence that all three have been copied and or altered. I think they've actually all three been altered. David, I can't thank you enough for your magnificent contributions to this study of the death of JFK. Thank you, Jim.